Um, my husband keeps saying we need to do another video together. We have, you know, so many things that we could tell you about and talk to you about. But he's been working himself ragged. Um, and speaking of him working himself ragged, um, what's been going on here is just severely stressful. Um, when we first moved here, um, we realized that the company that my husband works for is really, it's one of those intrusive companies. They want your bank account to take your, um, your uh, rent from. They want your apartment insurance they want your car insurance they want all of that um you know information um they are they made us sign like our freaking life away sign so many things before we were allowed to move in here um because my husband saw how serious they were he went over this place with a fine tooth comb and he wrote down all the stuff that's wrong. And then he told me to go over to, in case he overlooked something. And I went out into the patio. And that patio was disgusting. It, the paint job was horrible. It was filthy. Um, the, the aluminum warped. It seemed as if they were smokers here. And they like burned it or something. Um, and so I... I put everything down on sticky notes, he told me, and then he would copy them. Well, I think that sticky note fell off and that was never put in a, on the actual paper, um, you know, the move in paper sheet that you give them. Um, now they took it for granted that my husband was going to fix everything. And the thing is, he worked so hard on this job that he's too tired to come home and fix anything. Um, so now it's two years later um as of january like everybody quit and my husband's working by himself my husband works day and night and weekends without getting paid overtime because they said that you're not allowed to claim overtime that if you do you have to take time off because he's doing the work of four men he cannot take time off this has been going on since january twice a year they inspect the property and the person who is in charge is like freaking OCD and notices the tiniest little speck of unevenness in the wall which is ridiculous you cannot have it perfectly even um and you know they they you got in trouble for that now they hired a guy that didn't know what he was doing and so now my husband can't do his job because my husband has to babysit him constantly so finally the week before inspection he just really had a lot of things to do and he didn't babysit this new dude and he's been asking them since january this guy doesn't know what he's doing we need to get more men here blah 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 i mean the groundskeeper quit the cleaning lady quit um the guy who's supposed to have the red the apartments ready quit the guy's supposed to fix uh broken things quit so he's like they're like doing he's doing everything by himself practically and um not claiming any overtime because they you know get on your case they said they like they even used the word fire but they didn't say it directly towards him they told to his supervisor said that if my husband claims all his overtime that she was going to get fired um they also said that if they don't claim any overtime they'll give them a big bonus check at the end of four uh four months um, my husband was working himself ragged. He, I mean, even sometimes he gets sick because I think his, you know, it's just his, the, the stress on him is too much for his body. And so this OCD guy comes and I mean, it's not that it's dirty or anything, but again, the, the guy that doesn't know what he's doing, didn't do the apartments right. And they told my husband, well, that's your fault because you're the leader. And my husband over and over again told them, we need somebody new, we need somebody new. And they're like, no, work with him, work with him, work with him. And even like the people who are supposed to be, you know, people who work in the office that tell him this needs to get done, that needs to get done. Sometimes they tell him to do things that isn't in the budget. And he'll, he'll, he told them, look, I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, don't worry, we got your back. Got their back, nothing, he got in trouble. And they told him that he went $100,000 over budget, which I find insane. Um, and the people didn't back him up. They let him take the fall. And finally, when he, he had alone time uh, with with the people, like his supervisors or whatever, the regional managers or whatever, 
they told him that he's that what is he a wuss that he shouldn't have listened to them it's just really gotten really bad here and again they have access to our bank account and i called the bank and they said that they can take out as much money as they want i can't put a cap on what they can take out but you know i could show them the rental agreement and if they try to take out more then they'll you know they'll make sure i get my money back but they said the best thing to do is to close that account and open up a new account so in order to do that i need my husband with me and he is working freaking 24 7 here um I'm getting frustrated because I can't pay the bills since he can't, you know, he's not claiming his overtime. I, I, I'm getting less and less money to pay the bills. Again, this forced Obamacare, they're taking out that extra money. I mean, they're so stupid. They're so, I don't even know how, to, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't have the word stupid, but like they, instead of asking, do you want um, like things like um, uh, 401k. They said we're doing 401k. If you don't want, to, if you don't want it, you have to tell us within a certain time because this is gonna be like, like it's gonna be done. I'm like, how do they? You know, they. I don't think they can do that. You know, and he's so busy working, he forgot to follow up, and they were t even taking money for 401k. I'm like, we cannot live like this. The rent up, up, up in you know close to downtown or central Houston is a lot more expensive than you know rent going further down south. And you know we had a get you know we had a i tried calling a 401k from no we need to speak to him then he spoke he spoke to him himself and he had to be on top of them at the office and they finally stopped that but you know i'm going back and forth to the doctor i'm paying uh you know co-pays i have uh like a two thousand dollar deductible i'm getting bills and you know i was just you know all of this is happening and so my husband is working himself so ragged here that um when the when the inspector came and started looking at my microscopic little bumps on the wall which you cannot control they said they were going to demote him they fired like three people for failing inspection my husband didn't get fired they because last year when he had all the workers under him he he put this place up to number one but everybody quits here because this company's ridiculous and so they said because you got us out of uh, you know you got us up to number one last year in the the, the region we're not going to fire you like we fired those other guys but we're going to demote you the only reason we can afford to pay the rent here is because they agreed to pay my husband uh you know more money than he had before and even then it was like really tight and um so I went into a freaking panic. I went to the bank. I, I, we, it was hard. I, I, we went to the bank finally. I said, look, we got to do this. We went to the bank. We changed, we changed bank accounts and we, um, you know, we gave them the information. And as I was looking for, because you could do stuff online as well. As I was looking for that information, I was looking on, on the sheet, the moving sheet, and he did not put the information from you know that was on the patio what a disgusting mess that patio is it was filthy it's the the, the aluminum is warped and burned I was like, oh great you know and i called up the office and they said they were notated in the computer and i said can i get a copy then they gave me a copy i said look we got this is the new bank accounts uh, what i did was i put the rent one bank account for rent which i control how much money goes into that account and then the bank account for direct deposit so they were saying don't close out the account until we put this money in the account because then you won't get your pay and but it will be a hassle to get your pay blah blah and i'm like stressed to the max because my husband was supposed to get everything they were going to come back and inspect everything again and he has no help he has no help and like you know he's just doing everything by himself and he, he's not claiming the overtime and um I was stressed to the max. How are we going to pay these the rent? I, I'm not letting them. I said, there's just no way I'm going to be able to pay the rent. That's the bottom line. If I want to buy food, if I want to have electricity, you know, um, pay the insurances off, there's just no way I can cover the rent. And I'm stressed to the max and telling the only way we could get into another apartment is if he gets another job. 
if they demote him, the pay is going to be significantly smaller. And we're not going to be able to afford rent anywhere we go if we want a three-bedroom apartment. You have to remember, I have two adult children with mental illness. So I'm stressed out. I was like, I would have went. I, I started calling movers. I was going to start looking into realtors. Um, and then I was just going to go on foot to near where my brother lives and just go from apartment to apartment. But again, I, I, I said, wait a minute. My husband has to look for a job. And he, he should have started looking for a job at that moment that they threatened him. But he said he, he, you know, he wanted to prove that he can do it. And so they came back. You know, I was, he was, he, he seemed confident he couldn't do it, so I didn't worry. And plus, you have to pay, like, a month's rent if you, you know, break your lease. So I'm like, how we could, you know, they'll take that out of our bank account. So that's why I said I'm closing the, the bank account if they demote us. So I'm, like, severely stressed out because everything depends on my husband. So he seemed confident, so I stopped worrying. They, could, they told this company, the, I mean, the people here, the management in this property, they don't have it together. They're always doing things that late and then putting the pressure on you to take care of it. I, I know how many times I got something in my hand say, you have to sign this right now because it was supposed to be in yesterday. I mean, they just, pe people from the other properties, they beg them to come here and work here because they can't keep help here and they refuse. So, you know... They tell him, oh, the inspector's coming tomorrow. And, you know, he's just trying to keep up with all the workload. And so he's working all night. He got up early the next day. And the inspector is still complaining about microscopic things that don't matter. So that put me into another panic. And, I, you know, I'm telling my husband, look for another job. I can't look for another apartment because... The, you know, until you look for another job, I can't, we can't afford rent on what little bit of pay, you know, they're going to give you. And, and as a matter of fact, um, one of the reasons he can't get help is because they don't want to take the pay that they want to give for, you know, he's the, he, my husband's like the supervisor, so he needs men under him. They, they wrote him up, my husband, they said he's not a leader, that they lead him. He lets the, his workers lead him. It's like, what workers? There's no workers here. And every time you find someone good from the temp agency, they don't want to hire anyone from the temp agency because you got to buy them out. You have to pay $5,000 to the temp agency. So they don't want to do that. And he, so he's not getting help here. And yet, he, well, you're the leader. You know, the only guy he has here doesn't really know what he's doing. So it's so wrong and frustrating and i told my husband look if you're not gonna look for a job and they do demote you you know we're gonna get evicted because we're not gonna be able to pay the rent you're gonna have to speak to a lawyer and the labor department because the way that they do the pay just something really fishy about it i don't think he's really getting the pay he's supposed to get but anyway you know i'm dealing with my own um health problems i'm dealing with two kids with mental health issues i'm back and forth to the doctor constantly with them and with me and then my daughter moves here and, she, you know, she, my, my brother works, you know, all day. And she depends on me to bring her places and she's far away. You know, that, that's a 30 minute drive on one of the worst, on one of the worst highways ever. And my car is acting up. And, you know, I get afraid that I'm going to get stuck out there. And I told you, you know, you can't depend on me to do everything, you know. But the only thing I help her with is because she take her to the doctor because she needs she needs to get her antidepressants so i uh, all three of my kids anyway so i'm stressed out because i have to pick her up and bring her to the doctor and that's putting stress on me is dealing with her and dealing with my two kids dealing with my own health and now dealing with this i do not have the energy anymore to pack again i don't have the energy to move again last time um, if my brother and his wife were not here to help us move back in, we, I don't know how we would have done it. Um, if my son's friends back in North Carolina did not help us load the truck, because none of my husband's adult friends did it, from church, mind you. Um, you know, I don't think we can do it again. And, it, you know, so movers, I don't trust. And the reason is, is because if they're driving the truck, they can take detours. I know people... They, they, they tell you that you they can take 45 days before they deliver your stuff to your home. And I'm like, I'm not dealing with that, you know. But the, supposedly the movie company said, oh, well, you know, since it's local, you know, they will take the quickest route to your house because you have to pay them by the hour. And not only do they pack up 
No, they well they can't. I said no, I'll pack up my own stuff. But they said well they'll load the truck, unload it, and un, and and you know take down all the furniture and re put it up, and it's by the hour, and I think plus you have to pay for the gas or something. So um, you know it, it's the, I said I'd rather just drive my own truck, and they said well it's going to be the same amount of money whether you use our truck or not, and the drivers drive it instead of you, which I'm not crazy about that. So I'm like in a panic. My husband. All this time, it's been almost two months. He could have, we could have probably been out of here already. But he was afraid of breaking the lease. I was like, the heck with the lease. I'll close the freaking account. They won't be able to take money out of that. And if they threaten us, we'll, you know, I think we should sue them because this is wrong what they're doing to you. So my husband's just insisting he, you know, that he wants to prove that he can do it. And so this is cause this has been hanging over my head for two months. So. They just said, make sure this is done in 30 days. Little microscopic little bumps in the wall. Which, you know, the wall is never going to be perfect. I don't know where they get these guys to inspect the apartments. And so he is, he is like, uh, you know, I feel like I'm surprised he hasn't lost his mind. Because he still doesn't have any help here. And it's been months. So I have been stressed out to the max between going to the doctor for me, going to the doctor for with my three adult children, Worrying about this this property, worrying about my husband's mental health, I have just been overwhelmed, and I'm constantly, constantly doing something, and I haven't gotten back into exercise. I'm constantly doing something anyway, but I haven't really gotten back into exercise because I'm so exhausted on the days that I'm not doing anything, and I still, you know, I still gotta pay bills on my own. I still, I haven't even done our budget in months. I haven't done a budget, I think, since February because I just. I'm just paying the bills, and you know how you say, I, like, like I'm a very good budgeter. I put aside money every week so that when my car insurance comes, I have the money, you know, so that when the apartment insurance bill comes in, I have the money. Life insurance bill comes in, I have the money, and I haven't even, I don't, I haven't even been budgeting anymore, and I'm just paying the bills, and and our grocery bills are really high. They're really high when when you have kids on medication especially antidepressant type of medications and um my oldest daughter is just just suffers from depression but my two younger ones they that's is not just depression those pills make you eat and you wouldn't believe me if i told you what my grocery bill was but it's like a good half of my husband's paycheck um the other half goes to pay the bills um so and I put aside money, you know, when it's time to pay other bills. And plus, on top of that, they're taking out the forced insurance. And plus, I have now I have my own doctor bills. Uh, my son was was covered under a county health care. My daughter has disability, and my older daughter's in in a free clinic right now. Um, and and then when I go to take my son to the doctor, they don't even tell me what I went to make the appointment. The county didn't tell me they dropped him. They were supposed to keep him for a year, and they only kept him for 10 months. And I was like, why didn't you tell me? Oh, we don't have to tell you. You're just supposed to be on top of that. I said, okay, even if even if you said it takes a whole year. Because last year they told me it was time to renew his, you know, reapply. They cut him off after 10 months. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So now, and I couldn't talk to anybody because now you're not, you don't see anybody personally. Now you got to mail everything in. They will not allow you to talk to anybody about it. Uh, the only reason why I got a hold of someone was the appointment center. I spoke to someone at the appointment center about it. It's not the eligibility center. So it's it's been really, really stressful. Because with this forced insurance, you have to be covered or pay a fine. And I all this the past two months, I thought myself was covered. So I am so frustrated. County care is low-cost insurance, so we still have to pay something but at least it's not these ridiculous bills do you know what the lab work for me was i went to the liver doctor and the lab work was almost three thousand dollars for my lab work because the doctor said he couldn't treat my liver unless he knew what it was and he needed to do the lab work so um to top that off even with my allergies i'm leaving my door open several times a day for her to go out she refuses now. She's going all over the house. She has destroyed uh, the molding around the floor, all the, the wood in the bathroom. Um, scratched up the doors. Ripped up parts of the rug. Um, 
I don't know what's going to happen when we do move from here. I mean, if we were here for five years, because they, after five years, then they say, well, we're, you know, everything's been worn and torn. But before five years, it's, you know, it's prorated or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Now, as far as the rug, this is another thing that gets me. If you remember, they did not change the padding. And there were bed bugs in the, you know, hiding in the wood. They never changed the padding. So now they might try and, you know, say, oh, well, you know, your dog peed the rug or whatever. Now we got to change the padding too. So we're going to charge you for that, which is bull crap because they never changed it in the first place. I, um, I did find proof though, um, that the, I was like, I don't even have proof that the exterminator was here three or four times, last, you know, when that happened two years ago. Um, you know, before we could get rid of those horrible things. And, and then I found something, but it's, it's not dated. I did find proof that they were here, but it didn't have a date. Um, again, I found the proof, uh, well, I found, uh, everything and except everything but the patio. And I know they could try and get us on that warped, uh, aluminum. Um, I also found some proof that they were overcharging us for the apartment, uh, the, the first apartment we were in. And, um, which is proof that we didn't bring the bed bus. We were, they put us up in another apartment for two and a half weeks and there was no problem until we moved into this place. Um, so I did find proof that they were overcharging us for that apartment. They were also charging us for the garages. I found, um, proof that they had said they wouldn't. I found an email. I've been stressed out trying to find all these strings stressed out. You know, I go, I, I change the account information and I keep calling the office. They said that they will give me. Let me know when it took place. They said they're busy. They'll call me back. Never do. Because they just don't have it together. And I call and call and call. Sometimes they're just not there because they're showing apartments. So, I'm stressed out with this dog. I have to lock her in the bathroom. She's miserable being locked up. She hates being confined. And But she, even if I put out on the patio with the pads, she won't use the pads. She wants to be in here and, you know, running around the apartment and peeing and crapping everywhere. Um, she has a cage. That, if you remember the picture I showed you, it's a huge cage. So she has room. You remember when I first moved here, the bathrooms, um, you know, they, it's huge for her, enough for her to, to scamper about. I have a patio she can scamper about. And, um, and no, she just cries and cries and cries and cries and cries and cries. Because she wants to be in here with us. But she doesn't want to go. I mean, she can even circle around. I have two pads out. She could circle and circle. I could see her circling and circling. She's, she's about to squat and do her business, and then she just stops and just cries and cries and cries to be let out, to be from the bathroom to come on the rug. So she doesn't feel like she's separated. I, I'm using the gate that we bought to keep her from running outside. I'm using that to keep her in the bathroom. So at least she can hear us, and she can feel like she's still a part of the family. No, no, she just doesn't like being confined. She just wants to be able to be free and do whatever she wants. Um... I, I I seriously I thought she might have been retarded, um, but I don't think so because she's very destructive. She 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 gets mad at you. You know what she'll do? So she wants to go on the pad. She'll tear the pads up before she'll use them, and those pads cost money. Um, I think she just might have like ADHD or something. I don't know. Um, you know I don't know. So I have been severely stressed out. And, um, you know, it, it's, I've just been severely stressed out and, um, you know, back and forth to the doctor for them, back and forth to the doctor for me, back and forth to the doctor now for my oldest daughter, um, dealing with that dog. And I, you know, I, I know somebody got on my case saying that, oh, well, of course she's going to peel over before she's mad at you for keeping the door closed. I have allergies. I can't keep it open. Well, you shouldn't confine her. Of course she's unhappy. <laughs> what about my happy? What about my mental health, my emotional well-being? You know, I, 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 I don't know what to do. I mean, I've invested so much into this dog, but maybe she, maybe, maybe she isn't happy. And, you know, maybe somebody on a farm, she'd be happy on a farm where she could just run around and do whatever she wants. I, I don't know. I found out there's another place that'll take them in. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. We're all attached to her now, but I, I'm, I'm going out of my mind. I don't know what's going to happen to us, you know, moving, having to move out. But I told, I will pack up and move out. And I, you know, I will not allow them if they demote you when they have not given you any help and don't allow you to get overtime for the past six months and blame you for everything. 
you no, know, no, I, I, I no, I can't, I can't pay the rent, and I'm not gonna allow them to take it from the bank account. And then we're gonna get evicted. And then I'm thinking everything I own will be in the street. Uh, I wouldn't even dare do storage because you know how the storage places, they, they have all these little hidden fees, and then if you don't pay everything, they keep your stuff and auction it. I've just been so really stressed out. If I, at least I knew my husband had another job, then I could start looking for another apartment. But. Um, you know, looking for a job that's going to pay him what he's worth. Do they demote him? It's, you know, it's going to be really bad. I don't know what's going to happen. So, anyway, that's what's been going on with me. I probably talked for half, a good half hour, <laughs> at least. And, um, I don't even know when we move, if they'll accept us with two dogs. Um... So anyway, um, just been talking so long. Um.